Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. I just wanted to come to you just for a few moments. Just been really thinking, praying, and pondering um, this morning um, as we see so many things going on around um, our country, around the world, as we're watching people struggle in so many areas of life, um, legitimate and real struggles, um, whether it be from COVID, uh, whether it be from crisis around the world, um, whether it be from economic collapse that they're going through. Um, things are difficult right now. Um, and of course, the church is stuck into this, to me, senseless argument of whether should you be vaccinated or should you be unvaccinated? Does that mean we trust God or don't trust God? Should you wear a mask? Should you not wear a mask? Does that mean you have faith or don't have faith? I think it's just total ludicrous and ridiculous that we're even perpetuating the argument um, because... Honestly, saints of God, that is irrelevant as to our responsibility toward Christ. We're making issues over stuff that really in the long run is no issues at all. Um, Whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated to me doesn't say that you love God or that you hate someone. Whether you're masked or non-masked doesn't tell me that you have faith or no faith. All of that stuff needs to go away in the church. It's just an irrelevant argument. And the fact of the matter is we know that people are getting sick from COVID. Uh, We know people have died from COVID. We know people, this world, uh, whether you look into Afghanistan or other parts of the world, they're finding themselves in crisis. We know that the economy is not great. And so the whole point of my post is the, the more we become identifiable with the culture as the church, the less relevant we become to the generation that we're living in. God did not call us to be in panic when the rest of the world is in panic. He didn't call us to be in fear when the rest of the world is in fear. Uh, Things are going on, legitimate things, difficult things, hard things are going on. But the fact of the matter is the church has been called as light in darkness, as salt of the earth, which means that however the world is going, the church should actually be counter to that culture. See, if the world is in terror because of the pandemic, because things are legitimately happening to family members and friends around them, the church cannot be in full-blown panic mode. We understand sickness is a part of the curse, and it's a part of the fall. It's a part of what is upon us. And so we get that. We understand that completely. But the fact of the matter is we've been given power to lay hands on the sick and that they would recover. The Word of God told us that by His stripes we are healed. We realize that people are passing away of COVID. But what we cannot do is give COVID the keys to death and hell. Because you remember, Jesus is the one who resurrected with the keys of death and hell. And when we think that COVID has usurped the authority of Christ in that arena, then we have taken Christ off the the throne and we have put COVID on the throne. As children of God, who we know some have died of COVID, we have to understand that as Job said, he has appointed my boundaries. He's numbered my days. I can't pass over them. And so it doesn't matter whether it's COVID or a car wreck. It doesn't matter whether it's an air, you know, an airline crash or any other reason that would cause us to die. When our time comes and when our moment is here, when our boundary has been realized, it doesn't matter what takes us out. We will not pass over that moment. But when the church runs around in fear as if somehow COVID has the kind of authority to kill children of God without the Lord having any control, then we really have unseated Christ in our hearts. And that's the reason why we are living in fear, panic, and paranoia. Now, I'm not saying to be reckless. I'm not saying to go around kissing people in the mouth who are coughing and all that. I'm not talking about that stuff. We realize that this is an issue. And for some of you Christians that think that people taking vaccines or wearing masks, that they just don't have any faith and blah, blah. Some people just don't want to get sick. Let's just be realistic. That's the reason why when people are sneezing and coughing around you, you don't go and give them hugs. I mean, this is insanity that the church is even in this kind of argument. As if somehow the way I react to not wanting to get sick has to do with my faith or not my faith. That's ridiculous. But at the same time, when people get sick, the church can't afford to be too terrified of their sickness to pray for them. 
We cannot be in paranoia that if we lay hands on someone who is sick, that that sickness is going to be distributed to us and we're going to die of something. And this is beyond God's control and God has no authority over it. COVID has all of a sudden become the omniscient, omnipresent, almighty God. It's just not true. It's just not true. The church better be ready to pray for the sick or we will have lost our relevance to this generation. If we start walking in paranoia as it pertains to this pandemic, we will lose our relevance to this generation because we will be becoming identifiable with the culture. And children of God, if we are walking around terrified of death, we have lost the whole purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ, by which the scripture says he came to deliver them who were all their lifetime subject to bondage through fear of death. The Bible says better is the day of one's death than the day of one's birth. The Bible says that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of all of his saints. Once we start peddling that kind of fear, we have lost our hope in Jesus Christ. And we have lost the realization of the truth of the gospel. Death is an inevitable part of living. But it is not the end of life for the children of God. It is the end of death. And we better start walking with that kind of faith. We need to quit all this arguing with each other over whether we should wear a mask, shouldn't wear a mask, should get vaccinated, should get vaccinated. Listen, that's an irrelevant argument. Let's stop that junk. It has no place in the body of Christ. But the fact of the matter is neither does the paranoia that we're living with in this fear of death as if somehow... The COVID virus has supplanted the authority of Christ when it comes to having the keys of death and hell. It is absolutely ridiculous. And we are living in fear that God has not called us to, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We better wake up. Yes, things are going crazy in the Middle East right now, but that has to take place in order for the environment of the Middle East to be so hot that God can bring all the armies of the nations down against Jerusalem to battle. Are we forgetting? This all has to play out. And if you think COVID is bad, this will not be the worst pandemic or disease that is coming our way. We better start trusting in the Lord. Yes, should we be careful? Should we be sanitary? Should we watch ourselves? Sure we should. That's just part of good hygiene. That's just part of being considerate of other people. But I am not going to spend my life living in the paranoia of fear that somehow COVID has supplanted Christ as it comes to having authority over death and hell. It's just not going to happen. And it is time for you to stop living that. If you're living in that, you've lost your vision. You have lost your sight of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, what if I get sick, Pastor Jared, and I die? Then that was your boundary and you could not pass over it. It was your time. You would have died in a car accident. You would have died of a heart attack. You would have died of something, a stroke, a, a brain aneurysm. Once you hit your boundary, again, you cannot pass over it. So as long as we're giving in to the fear culture that is now predominantly reigning over our country and over our culture, then we have lost our whole relevance to this generation because the church was supposed to be light and salt and all we do is taste like the world. It is time for God's people to wake up. I'm not, try I'm not trying to be belligerent or hateful with anyone. It's just we've lost sight of who we are and we better return to it or God's going to raise up somebody else to get it done because he's going to have a church without spot, wrinkle, holy, and without blemish. It's going to happen, whether I'm a part of it or not. My God, let us once again return to the faith of our, of, of, of our Father, to the faith of the gospel, to the faith of the word of God. Let us quit living in the paranoia of the culture of fear that is absolutely predominant in our generation. Let us be salt and light. Yes, let us be considerate and careful and all that wonderful stuff. But at the same time, my goodness, saints, when other diseases come, is the church going to be terrified to pray with people because we don't want to get the disease? Remember, they had leprosy back then, and they were still praying over people. There were all kinds of diseases and pandemics going around that generation, and they were still praying with people because that's who they were. They were salt. They were light. I fear that the church is becoming irrelevant to the generation because we are becoming identifiable with the culture. 
If you feel like you need to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. It doesn't mean that you don't love God or don't have faith in God. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Doesn't mean that you don't have faith. If you don't want to do that, don't do that. It doesn't, that in the long run means nothing to our Christianity. What does mean something is if we're running around terrified of dying, because then we have lost our hope. We've lost our vision and we've lost the whole purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ was to bring us to a place where we could be born again. That when Christ returns, we might be welcomed in his, into his eternal kingdom. Having lost the curse of this mortal body and have taken on the beauty of his immortal body. Having lost the curse of this world and living in the glorious kingdom of Jesus Christ. That is the whole reason we are living for Jesus Christ. That's the whole purpose. And somewhere along the line, some of us have forgotten that. And we need to remind ourselves again. Turn off the news media and turn the pages of that Bible until you find hope again. That's the only place you're ever going to find it in this generation. You will not find it on TV. You will find it within the word of God. So are people dying of COVID? Sure they are. Is it sad? Sure it is. People are losing people they love. But as a child of God... Better is the day of one's death than the day of one's birth. Because dying to the child of God is not the end of life. It is the ultimate end of death. The next thing we will know is immortality and death will have been defeated. So when this mortal shall have put on immortality and when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, then once I die, and I am resurrected at the return of Jesus Christ. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? It is time for the church to loose itself from the irrelevant arguments that we have been engaged in because we have wanted to be identifiable with the culture. And it is time for us once again to turn to the word of God and to live as children of God full of faith, full of power, full of joy, full of peace and refusing ever again to be bound to the anchor of fear because we might die. That's why we live in hope is because we know death is inevitable, inevitable, but so is the coming of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord grant you peace, child of God. It is time for the church to become relevant to this generation by not identifying with the culture of fear. Whether it be the mess going on in Afghanistan, whether it be your economic situation, listen, if, you're, if, 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 you're, if your money's acting funny right now, give your way out of it. And I promise you, you will be able to say like David said, I have been young and I am now old and I've never, never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread because he will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm not going to spend my life identifying with the culture of fear. It is not going to happen. I am a child of God who wants to be careful, wants to be considerate, but at the same time, I must be salt and light. I must be counter the culture, which means in a world living in total fear, I must be a child of God living in complete faith. God bless you guys. See you soon.